why is it important to talk about the representation of women of color in tech? Well, that's a great question. And I think first, because most of the time when we bring diversity, the racial issues are yet not highly discussed. Um, so there is, of course, a huge woman in tech movement and uh, that I think it's happening in uh, most of the countries today. Uh, I know that there's a big one happening in Brazil as well, but especially there when we do have like such a diverse society where I come from, the woman in tech movement is still raised in a white feminism context. Uh, so it, it is thought uh, by white women and, and uh, for white women. Uh, so I think it's important to, to talk about uh, representativeness and how important it is for women of color who are in these spaces, like me, for example, to be able to look to the side and recognize each other. Uh, and it's not just about having women of color uh, in the workplace, but it's also about how we can create an environment for them to stay and to maintain and support themselves as well. Mm. Yeah, because having a sense of belonging in a business is so important. You could have an element of diversity or inclusion, but if you don't personally feel like you belong in that environment, then it really is invalid. And you're so right. You know, diversity, it comes in so many different forms and every form is equally as important. What have been the main challenges faced by women of colour in tech? One of the main challenges is the difficult access uh, to tech in general. I think uh, having access to proper education and being encouraged uh, to know that uh, you can be there. The lack of opportunities as well given to women of color when we compare to uh, other groups. Mm -hmm. And as much as people today are very concerned about diversity, in general, as I said, uh, people do not understand that diversity is something that does not come ready and it's necessary like to make an investment and effort and to be able to bring these people in and create also a safe environment for them to stay. Another challenge I think is, uh, is the question of uh, representativeness uh, because when you don't see anyone like you in the workplace, you don't think you can be there. You, you think that you don't belong as you mentioned before. Belonging is so, so important. And if it's already a challenge to be a woman in tech, uh, for women of color, it ends up being a challenge, even more challenging, because we have to deal not only with sexism, but also overlapping racism as well. Yeah. What can we do to make a change to, to help support you, for example, Juliana, in feeling this way? I can say about my personal experience that uh, when I was not identifying myself in most of the places I worked with, uh, especially when it comes to leadership. I never thought I, I could be a leader uh, because there was no one there uh, like me represented in these positions. Uh, so I really like to quote from, I guess it's a, it was from Shonda Rhimes book. I don't know if you, if you read My Year of Yes. It's a really good one. I can recommend. <laughs> uh, she, but she talks about uh, being an FOD. And FOD stands for first, only different. Uh, and then uh, when you are an FOD, first, only different, it's like you are part of a very select club. And we know one another on site. And we all have the same like uh, wary look in our eyes, uh, the look that wishes people like could stop thinking that it's remarkable, that we can be great uh, at what we do while being woman, while being black, while being Latino, while being uh, Native American, while queer. Uh, but when we are part of this group, group, we are saddled with the burden of this extra responsibility, whether we want it or not, uh, it's not optional for us. Mm -hmm. So I think being part of this club many times in my life uh, meant that I was used as a diversity token for companies that were not diverse at all. And I think I didn't get second chances very often, which is also something that we, we definitely need to change. As being part of this club, I, I already have the burden and the extra responsibility to build opportunities for the next generations to have second chances. So I think that in order for us to change that, us, that we are the first only and different, we need to fight uh, for a better, uh, better world and we need to fight uh, 
for, for the next generations to have second chances, the ones that we didn't have. How can technologies contribute to building a fairer and more equal society for women of colour? I think for tech to become this tool of uh, social transformation that we want so bad, I think it's important that uh, we think about uh, diversity when it comes to tech production. So whenever we're producing something, we need diverse teams, we need more people thinking, producing and criticizing tech as well. And although we don't know the, all the impact that this has on our lives right now, we already know that it can reproduce many prejudices and uh, exclude uh, many people. I think it is, it is a very complex field, but I think we always have to think that technology is not neutral mm -hmm. and that it carries the worldview and the baggage of people who create it. And I think it's very different when a person of color, for example, creates technology because the worldview is very, very different. So I think, yes, the technologies can definitely help uh, building a desire for a more uh, equal society. One way is to bring uh, more people to this discussion and to bring uh, different people with different background to this discussion. But that's not the tech that will do it. This is us. This is people.